Hello everyone. Won't you come with me on a trip to a time long ago and a place far away? Well, for some of you, it's probably not very far away. In fact, it might be where you live. But, but for most of you, this is probably a, a fairly long time ago. Let's go back to the year 1933. What's this all about? Well, let's take a look at our files here. We have just one executable file, so let's go ahead and run it. Now, this is not exactly a game. Calling this a game is a bit of a stretch, but it's, I don't know, it's not really productivity software, and so, you know, it sort of falls into that catch-all category of software toys or whatever, which, you know, which would probably be put in the same category as games in a software store back in the, uh, back in the year 1990, when this was made 30 years ago. So this is a very obscure little DOS program, which I saw a long time ago and wanted to make a video of, just because I find it kind of inspiring on so many levels. So, yeah, so this is from a company, I guess, called Amalgamated Vaporware. Unfortunately, I don't think uh, much ever came of them. At least I don't, I'm not aware of any other products from them. Um, warning, do not multitask. <laughs> I don't know why you're not allowed to multitask while playing this, uh, but anyway. Individuals may further make copies. Um, yeah, I guess you were expected to um, to register this. Or actually, no, it says you can you can obtain a free registration by sending a self-addressed stamped envelope to us returning a completed registration form. So yeah, this is from uh, E.P. Grandin of Amalgamated Vaporware in Burr Hill, Virginia. And what is this exactly? Well, okay, first these are the these are the instructions. So um, F1 or I or H is help. Uh, you have basically, so you have the four arrow keys for forward, backward, left, and right. Um, you don't quite have WASDA, instead you have WXDA. Um, F2 or M or C or K pulls up the map and then S or T turn the sound on and off. Uh, the reason for the multitude of keys is, as you can see, there are many different instructions. So for example, instructions in English might be Unterrichts in German. I, I don't think that's the correct German word, by the way, but, um, uh, you know, it's obviously meant to be German. Actually, there's no U. Okay, so for that one, you don't get, uh, you don't get a German equivalent, but I guess I for instructions or H for help. And then there's also Instructiones, which I believe is Italian. And then, uh, yeah, M for map, or C for cart or carte, or K for Karte in German. And then sound is Ton in German, so that's the reason for the different uh, keys. But what's this all about? Well, it's about this. Now, this is a very simplified map of the 1933 World's Fair which was held in Chicago, Illinois, obviously in the United States of America. And um, I think the actual fair was, I think the fairgrounds were a lot more elaborate than this in real life, but this is a fairly simplified version of it. So you've got, in the upper left, you've got the, uh, the German pavilion, I guess, with, with an Adler on it, which means eagle. In the top left there, there's an agricultural area. In the upper right, I guess that's the American States, US, there's a sky ride and science thing down there. At the bottom, you've got some, uh, I guess, you know, the, the Czech Republic. Uh, wasn't it already Czechoslovakia back then? I think it was Czechoslovakia, not the, not an independent Czechia or Czech Republic. And then there's Italia. And I'm surprised that there's, there's no French exhibition here, but anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and press the enter key to continue. I love the um, these translations, by the way. I don't speak... I, I don't speak fluent French or Italian, but at least as far as the German there goes, I'm pretty sure that the German there is wrong. I'm pretty sure that those translations were created by somebody just going through a dictionary and just writing down the first word that they saw there without regard to word order or verb conjugation or anything like that. But this is what we have. So this is a simulation of walking around the 1933 World's Fair. And again, you know, it's, it's a first person game with the four arrow keys. So if I press up, for example, the, the program beeps quite a bit to indicate that it's doing something. And then much later, you, we, we've taken a step forward. And if I press arrow right,
there we go. Now we've we've turned a little bit to the right. Now this, I, I'm really impressed by this program because the frame rate on this program is just phenomenal. We have a frame rate of something like 0 0.2 frames per like like one frame every like it's not frames per second it's seconds per frame and that somebody actually released this that somebody actually had the audacity to go all the way through with this to create this program all the way to the end and say let's release this and ask people to register it if they want to keep using it that somebody actually made this is incredible. And this, you know what I'm going to do? I'm running this in DOSBox X because DOSBox X has a turbo, aka fast forward mode. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. So it should be a little bit faster. I'm going to try taking another step forward. It, it's still a little, it's, it's a little faster. I mean, it still beeps quite a bit, but yeah, it definitely goes faster than it did before. So I think I'm going to go ahead and keep it like that. And let's see if we can find that. So those red and white domes over there. I guess that's the agricultural area. Let's see if we can get over there and uh, actually hold on. Let's see if we can walk into this yellow and black building because this is the building that's closest to us. Now this program is really something wonderful because it has so many parallels with the um, with the event that it depicts and also with the time that we're living in now. Now the fair that we're here at today, the 1933 World's Fair in Chicago, the fair was actually called A Century of Progress, which is a wonderful name, a wonderful title, because the fair actually took place around the beginning of the Great Depression. And the Great Depression was easily one of the, um, one of the most significant economic downturns in modern history. Um, and 1933, the year which this program is named after, in which the fair was named after, was a very, um, I don't want to say auspicious necessarily, because auspicious means something good, uh, promising something good. But 1933 was a very important year in many ways, because, yeah, by the way, you probably noticed, you just walk right through buildings. I got so caught up with what I was talking about, I didn't, I, I didn't really focus on the program. I'm just, I'm just kind of like idly pressing the keys while I talk now, because it takes so long to get anywhere in this. So 1933 was, again, a uh, kind of a notorious or infamous year, because um, besides being close to the start of the Great Depression, it was the year that Adolf Hitler was elected Chancellor of Germany. It also happened to be the year that uh, Franklin Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was elected president of the U.S., um, who ended up being the president that saw the U.S. through World War II, and who um, unfortunately did not live to see the end of the war. Um, Roosevelt died shortly before the end of World War II. Uh, I believe he served four terms as president. Back then, the two-term presidential limit did not exist. I bet uh, some of you folks are happy that that limit exists today. Um, but yeah, so there was a lot happening in 1993, but at the time, of course, people didn't know about that. Of course, people didn't know that um, six years later, World War II would break out. And of course, people didn't know about all the horrible things that would happen as a result of that. Um, but they were aware of the Great Depression, and yet it was still a time of great hope. And basically the whole point of this fair, as I understand, I mean, I wasn't there, I wasn't alive when this happened, but my understanding about the fair is that it was sort of an exhibition of science. It was more, it was not so much about world cultures or, you know, any, any kind of, you know, art or dance or music or anything like that. It was more about science and about how science transforms people's lives. Well, it does transform people's lives. And, you know, this was not a great time in human history. You had the, uh, you had the Great Depression, and then right after that, you had World War II, and that went on for uh, for about five years, or a little more than five years. But after that, there was really something uh, quite incredible that came after that. I mean, not long after World War II ended, the space race started, which of course led to, you know, the first people in space, the first people on the moon. And then after that, you had the whole um, information revolution, the whole thing, you know, computers and then later the uh, the internet started coming becoming a thing and that that has really changed the, the world that uh, that we live in so 
This fair was kind of a beacon of hope and sort of a message of progress. I guess primarily scientific progress, but also probably social and political progress at a time when the world was in a very dark place and not only in a dark place, but about to enter an even darker place, which people didn't know about. Again, you know, in 1933, people didn't know about World War II. They didn't know what was going to happen in a few years. Um, but they still found it in themselves to be, you know, very hopeful about the situation that they were in. And I see a lot of parallels to, to the situation that we're in today, because 2020 has not been a great year. Um, I guess primarily because of Corona. I mean, I'm... You know, people say that um, a lot of things went wrong in 2020, but really the main new thing, like the main thing that really went wrong in 2020 was the whole coronavirus thing. And um, besides the people who died as a result of it, of course, it's also, you know, the the uh, economic fallout of it. I mean, a lot of people have lost their jobs and are still losing jobs. A lot of companies are closing and things like that. And a lot of people are quite quite horrified about this and you know paralleling the whole situation in 1933 there are concerns about a rise in political extremism and i would say there you know on both sides of the political spectrum there is there has been a rise in political extremism and political politically motivated violence in the past few years so in a way we're in a really bad time but you know what I really don't think that the times we're in now are anywhere near as bad as what humanity has seen before. If you, if you think back to the times, you know, in this simulation, the year 1933 and the years immediately following it, and, and you know, even after World War II, uh, there was the Cold War. And think about how many times humanity was almost destroyed, how many times that we almost obliterated ourselves. If you think about... If you've ever read about the Cuban Missile Crisis, understand that when that happened, we were less than 24 hours away from probably eliminating eliminating all life on planet Earth. Not just all human life, but all life, period. We were less than 24 hours away from ending everything. And, you know, when you consider the situation today with, you know, with where Russia is positioned today, I mean, yeah, there are still some tensions between Russia and the Western world, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was during... Oh, I took a step backwards, sorry. We're nowhere near as bad as we were during the Cold War. We are much farther away from sudden and total nuclear annihilation than we were throughout most of the Cold War. And... What was that building that we just walked through, actually? I'm just curious. I press M for map. Oh, is that the U.S.? So I think what I did is, I think we started in the upper left around the German area there. I think we walked by the agricultural area. That was that red and white building that I walked through. And now I guess we're in the U.S. area. So I guess if I keep going straight, I'll hit a, a beach and the end of the map. And then on the right, there's the sky ride. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, okay. We're, we're coming to some water. And then on the right, we'll have that. Sky ride. Okay, let's take a look. So yeah, you know, things are not great now. I, I won't deny it. 2020 has not been a great year. But when you stack it up against what humanity's been uh, been against in the past, you know, the, the World War II, the whole thing with the the Holocaust and everything that happened there, uh, you know, the the Great Depression, ten years of total economic devastation, and then decades and decades of facing. You know, again, Cold War, total elim total elimination of all life on planet Earth. The situation we're in now is nowhere near as bad as that, and humanity made it through those situations. So I think I think we'll make it through this situation as well. I think this is really uh, not the worst that humanity has ever been up against. And you know, if you look at the past, often one tragedy offset another. I guess this is the uh, that Skywalk thing. Or Sky Ride. Oh, I guess there's like a... I guess those cables at the top are like... Oh, it's like one of those... Um, what do you call it? Like a gondola or something that uh, that rides along those high, you know, strung cables there. So you can ride up above and look down on, on people and... And... Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I was saying... So, you know, sometimes one disaster offsets another. Because... 
if you think about disease epidemics in the past and how they've affected humanity, like for example, I mean, an obvious example is the Black Plague. Now, most people today remember the Black Plague as something really terrible. But if you look at the effects that it had on society, it actually, I mean, okay, the Black Plague was terrible for the people who died and who suffered with, you know, with illness. I'm not saying that it was a great thing in that sense. But after the Black Plague lifted, life was a lot better for the people who were, who were left because there was suddenly a huge demand for workers. So many people had died that there was such a shortage of workers workers of almost every type could get much higher salaries and were in much higher demand because about one third of the population had died so i mean you know it's it's kind of um i'm not saying it's great that that about 30 percent of europe's population died but it had definitely positive economic effects for the people who survived the black plague and, you know, again, going back to World War II and the, the Great Depression, the Great Depression was fairly directly ended by World War II. I mean, really what ended the Great Depression was the sudden huge surge in demand for um, not only military equipment, I mean, not just, you know, guns and tanks and things like that, but also all type, you know, because in a war you need lots of things. So just the huge, the massive upsurge in manufacturing that, uh, that came about as a result of the, the war effort. And... You know, World War II is, in a way, it's one of humanity's greatest tragedies. It's one of the greatest tragedies in all of human history. On the other hand, it is the event that single-handedly put an end to the Great Depression. So, my point with all of this is sometimes you need a really huge change to make long-lasting change. And I remember in the last few years, there's been a lot of talk, really a lot of talk on all different levels about how we need political change. We can't just maintain the status quo. We can't just have people saying the same things and doing the same things. Capitalism is sort of, um, I mean, you know, what, what is capitalism? Um, it, it needs a revamp. I'm not saying we need to get rid of capitalism, but in its current form, in its current sort of ideology, it, it needs to be changed. Uh, I'm not saying that we should embrace communism or socialism or anarchy or anything like that, but if we're going to stick with communism, at least uh, uh, capitalism, at least there needs to be some kind of reform. There needs to be some kind of change to it. And the coronavirus situation is a huge shock. It is a huge shock to the system. And sometimes that's exactly the kind of thing that you need. What's going to happen? I think is when when the situation gets better, when the disease kind of you know eases off, uh, if we get a vaccine for it, which might happen next year, and you know the whole situation with people getting infected becomes less of a concern, then what's going to happen is all the suppressed development is going to spring back. All the people who lost their jobs, all of a sudden there's going to be demand for workers again. And there's going to be a huge, a huge upsurge in demand for workers of almost all types. Because that's usually what happens in these situations. You get a huge set of layoffs. I mean, look what happened at the beginning of this year. At the beginning of 2020, there was a massive amount of layoffs. In the U.S., I think uh, unemployment reached its highest rate ever in all of American history. But a month or two later, those numbers bounced back. People got their jobs back. So, you know, there was a huge shock. But after that huge shock, things, uh, things recovered. And if you look at the stock market, the stock market, you know, also had uh, for several days, it actually had its, uh, on several consecutive days, it had its biggest drop ever. Uh, but it recovered that in, in a couple of weeks, and now I think it's, it's hitting new highs again. Now, the stock market itself is not necessarily an indication of how much money people are making. I mean, you can't directly make money on the stock. Hold on, what, was, what is that? Is that a blimp in the sky? I'm guessing that's a blimp. Where are we now? We're here at the... Oh, right, we're here at the Italian uh, pavilion. Okay. Italia is on our right, and Czechia or Czechoslovakia is on our left. All right. Not bad. Um, and I guess that was the science pavilion that we were at before. Okay. So yeah, I don't invest in the stock market because I don't have enough money to, you know, to really make big returns on a game like that. 
And um, unless you have a lot of money, you probably don't invest in it yourself. So you probably don't directly make a lot of money from it. But the stock market is useful as an indication of where things are going. If the stock market is making money, then there's potential for even you know little people, let's say people who don't have much money to make money, because they, um, they can benefit from knock-on effects of a rising economy. And the thing is, you know, People say that the stock market, going, stock market going down is bad, but it's not necessarily bad. The stock market fluctuates a lot. It flu if you've ever seen a, a graph of it, it fluctuates a lot. And the thing about the stock market is, you can make money on it when it's going up or down. If it's going up, you buy long. If it's going down, you you um, you sell short. That's you know that's how you make money. So you can make money on the stock market in either direction. The only way you can't make money is when the stock market is stable, when it's not moving. Now, stability is good. I mean, I, I, I value economic stability, but the thing is, we live in a very business-oriented world. And in a business-oriented world, opportunity comes from change. Change means opportunity. And right now, we're in a period of really great change, of really huge change. And things are not good now. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying things are great. They're not. Things are, are really bad right now. But they've been worse, and we've survived worse before. And the nice thing about this downturn is that when things pick up, they're really going to pick up. There's going to be a big surge, a big, big surge in new development, new business ventures, and that means new hiring. And that means new opportunities for everyone. For everybody who's involved in business in any way, whether you're an entrepreneur or just a worker, that means new opportunities for everybody. Change means new opportunities for people who, uh, who want to take advantage of them. So that's why I'm not too worried about the future. I know a lot of people are panicking and saying, well, what kind of future are we heading into? And, you know, again, I think back to 1933, Hitler got elected as uh, Chancellor of Germany. That wasn't too great. That didn't uh, that didn't work work out too well for Germany. Um, actually, it didn't it didn't work out too well for the whole world. That wasn't really uh, wasn't really a great thing. Great Depression, World War II, Holocaust, Cold War, and yet through it all, what happened? We we continued to advance and develop. Like I said, you know, we we developed space travel. We developed computers, the internet. Um, and even existing technologies like cars and airplanes become became much more advanced than they had been. So I think that we're still standing on the edge of a lot of development. We're in a bad cycle right now. We're in a bad part of history. But um, again, you know, the 1933 World's Fair was titled, it was called A Century of Progress. That was almost a century ago. This was about 90 years ago now. I guess, what, 87 years ago? So al almost a century ago. And what a century it's been. And what kind of a century do we have ahead of us? I don't know. Nobody knows that. And the future might be bad. I'm not saying that uh, the future is all going to be good. I mean, bad things are going to happen as well. But there's still a lot of room for growth. There's still a lot of room for development and new discoveries and new ideas and new, uh, new attitudes and new ways of living in the future. I think... Uh, you know, a lot of people are, are scared of the future. A lot of people are saying, uh, is this it? Like, is this is this the end of the world? People always are worried about the end of the world. You know, when, uh, when the two uh, atomic bombs were dropped on Japan, people said, this is the end of the world. This is the beginning of the era of nuclear warfare. We're going to wipe ourselves out. But we didn't. We're still here. And, you know, with all the challenges that we're facing today, I mean, I won't deny the problems. I'm not saying that the, the problems aren't real. They're, they're very real problems. Um, but we have ways to address them. I mean, we can, we can deal with those problems. We can change how we live and who we are and what we want and what we do with our lives. And we can still... Uh, we can still go forward to who knows what. I mean, I don't know what the future holds. Nobody does. But uh, maybe we're standing on the uh, on the threshold of another century of progress in these very dark, very discouraging times. I think uh, I think there's still a future waiting for us. And it's going to be good and bad. It always is. The future is always good and bad. I'm not saying it's... Yeah, I'm not... I'm not I, believe me, I'm not somebody who sees the future through rose-colored glasses. I'm not saying it's all going to be great. 
but there's going to be good and bad. And uh, I think that those who uh, those who are curious and those who are you know willing to try new things and are willing to explore and discover what the future has to offer, I think uh, I think we still have some great days ahead of us, folks. So that's my message to the world today as I navigate at something like 0 0.5 frames per second through this simulation of the 1933 World's Fair. I just think this program is wonderful because, again, if I had, if I had tried to write a program like this, I would have gotten maybe about 1% finished and then said, you know what, this is ridiculous. Nobody's ever going to run this. Nobody's ever going to want to pay for this or, or, or even... Uh, people won't even play this for free. That's the thing. That, that's why this... It's, it's one of those kind of... It, it's kind of a so bad, it's great kind of thing. This program is so bad. Um, it's so bad that I'm just... I'm fascinated by it. Every time I think about this, I just think, what motivated these people? What motivated this developer to say, you know what, we're going to see this through. We're going we're gonna to write this program. We're going to finish writing this program that animates at, like one frame every five seconds and nobody's ever going to want to play it or run it or do anything with it but we'll do it just because we have this vision we have i have a dream i have a dream of making a simulation of the 1933 world's fair that runs at 0 0.2 frames per second and i'm darn well going to do it and nobody, nobody's going to stand in my way and they did it it's just amazing I really like this program. I mean, it's it's so bad, but it's just I'm I'm so fond of it. And we're back where we began. We're back here at the uh, at the German Pavilion where uh, where where everything all began in 1933. Uh, <laughs> so, so I guess I I guess I finished my tour and my um, verbal uh, tour as well. Uh, I finished my yeah I finished my walking around tour and I finished my verbal tour of the 20th century. So thanks for coming along with me on this journey, everybody. Everybody, I hope that it was, I tried to say everyone and everybody ended up saying everybody. Hey, everybody. Um, or I guess, I guess I could say everybun. Hey, everybun. Um, thanks for coming along with me on this journey of exploration and discovery and reminiscing about humanity's history and its future. I think... Um, I think that all of us have good reasons to be hopeful. Uh, I know things. I know for a lot of you folks, things are bad right now, and I understand it. I mean, things aren't great for me either. But um, I realize that we, uh, you know, actually the situation in many ways opens up for us uh, huge amounts of potential and possibilities for the future. So stay strong, everyone. I think that um, things are going to get better. And you know what they say, it always gets worse before it gets better. So it might still get worse, but I think there's going to be a point in the not too distant future when things are going to get a lot better and we'll, uh, we'll have new, uh, new avenues opening up to us. So stick around, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope that, uh, I hope that you're all doing well. I hope that you're sticking, you know, hanging in there in, uh, in what are, again, you know, admittedly difficult times. Uh, but thank you for being here with me, folks, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye for now.